all walks of life. The Spirit of God has been poured out without measure upon people that's going through a literal area of needing a breakthrough, a miracle for their lives. You may be suffering with depression. You may be suffering with bills. You may be suffering with literally going through a divorce. I'm trusting that you would be ever so blessed by the living God, no matter what you're faced with. Why? Because God is bringing you into a new era, the lifeline. Exist. 
Now I'm going over to the book of Genesis. And I want you to read that and you'll be seated. You'll be just as happy as you want to be. Amen. Y'all got that? Genesis chapter 6. Anybody know Genesis? The first book of the Bible. If you miss Genesis, that means you can't read. But I'm sure you can read a little bit because you know it's not with a G. All right. In the book of Genesis, y'all got it? Chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. And came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the doors were born unto them. Read. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. Verse 4.
household was raised up as a baby watching pornography. And I had to talk with this young man and say, listen, we're going to cast it down. He said, I talked it over with my wife because she knew what type of background I came from. And I wanted to be delivered from that evil spirit. And so therefore, he was having problems in the eye gate. Are y'all still here? Yes. There's certain things you can't look on. Even in the book, in the Old Testament of the Bible, when I think that was Noah, he got drunk. And when Noah got drunk, he fooled around and, and, and laid out naked in his tent. And so his son Ham came in there and saw his father naked, fell out laughing, went back and told his brothers, Y'all ain't know You ain't gonna look on your mother and father back in there. Are y'all still here? So they saw him and saw the nakedness. They came back and they went to the tent and turned around backwards, got a sheep, and walked backwards and covered their father. But when the drunkenness was over in Noah, immediately he cursed Ham for the Bible said he knew what he had done to him. Now that word done to him puzzled me. What did he do to his father? Y'all ain't talking to me up in this. Yes. It left an inquisitive thought in my mind because something was wrong with this picture. So now, as we go a little farther, we talked about how these angels, which were angelic beings, saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they came down and took them wives of every one they chose, the Bible said, and they had sex with them. And when they had sex with them, they got pregnant. And when they got pregnant, they had mighty men of renown. That means they had giants. I looked on YouTube, if you get home, you can see them dug up some fossils. To a giant, would be his head would be right here, and his feet would go over to the wall. That seed came from Anakin. And that was a rough spirit when they started having sex with the sons of men and daughters. Your seed is important. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm talking about your sheep. Babies, you got to realize men are male men. They put male in the box. But you better watch. You better watch what they put in your box. Now, here we are looking at the world as you see it now, where people are caught up 
and they're not thinking. They're, they're doubting anything. And the world says it's all right. And the Supreme Court right now, just as they're trying to implement that we can have same-sex marriage. The devil is a liar. If you think you got pregnancy man for a man come down here, I'm going to cast the devil out of you. See, it don't take much for me to read between the lines of either read, uh, let me say it like this here. I can see you on Facebook. You like men's chest and you're a man. I don't want to see a man's chest. Do you hear me? That lets me know you got inklings towards a man. You cannot be in love with the same thing that you are. Man, do you hear me? I don't understand. How can two men fall in love? That's not love, that's lust. When Goma got an anchor to go out, she would go out to one day. 
Jacob came home and said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, Lord. I'm leaving you, Jose, and all these babies. And she left. Now, when she left, she got out there and got messed up on crack, messed up on alcohol. She partied hard to all that beauty of Goma went down the drain. The nightlife took her out. Nightlife have a tendency to make bags come under your eye. Your hair and your weeds start sagging up the way. <laughs>
I don't have a lot of world friends. Because they ain't going to give me no advice. If they come to give me some advice, I'll tear their head off. <laughs> ain't no devil going to counsel me. The Bible talk about wicked communication. Or right, right, right. evil communication. It corrupts your mannerism. I'm going around every day and smoking pot in my face. Yeah, they ain't no good. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you smoking pot. And you gonna give me advice? You just got busted for stealing. And you gonna give me advice? Here you was hanging out all night long. And you still in the juke joints. In the back alley. In the bar, in the car. <laughs> and you won't give me advice? The devil is a liar. I can't let you tell me anything because I can't have you talking to me with your crazy insane self. <laughs> he that is spiritual, give me somebody to say it. Psalms 70. Psalms 70. Psalms. 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 I didn't say Charms. I didn't say Coco. I said Charms. Psalms. Psalms 70. Got it? This is what you read. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. To deliver who? Not my brother, not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Make haste, no oh God, to do what? Deliver me. You got to go deliver that preacher, God. No, I come to deliver you. Everybody got to get something out. Come on now. You got to get it out. Because there's some. I remember one time, a cussing spirit tried to come on me. Y'all ain't never had a cussing spirit come on me. Y'all ever had a cussing spirit? I had a cussing spirit try to jump on me from my past and try to make me cuss. Never tell me. Like that. Didn't I tell you? They're not 
tell you, did not tell you. That is not the answer to the problem. Neither is it the solution. The solution is for me to pray for them, bring them into a place, corral them, and cast that devil out of them. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all, listen to me now. Listen to me very closely. Because wickedness lies at the door. When I talk and you talk, guess what? It's a demon. Make sure you hear me. I can show you a scripture in the book. It says, keep thy foot when I go to the house of God. Be ready, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of foods for they consent not that they do evil. We are in the presence of God. Yeah. This is deep, isn't it? Yeah. Read. Let them be confounded. Ashamed and what? And confounded that seek after my soul. Read. Turn back and put to death that desire my heart. It's like God says, He said, kill them. Let's be faithful. Read. Let them be turned back for reward of their shame. Of their own shame. Why did He say for reward of their shame? Because everybody got sin in their life. That's where Romans chapter 3, verse 23 ended up at. What did it say? It says, for all that sin and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Now, you don't hear preachers talk about sin no more. Why? They got too many of these. And they pay big time. Don't mess up my money. Even though I got a funny money, don't you mess with my money. You better get that funny money straight. Because basically, a man is not supposed to be in love with another man. When he's that caught up in that man, then that man has committed an abomination. And in the Old Testament, he said he should be put to death. The reason why they would kill him in the Old Testament, they did not want it to spill over. Because if it spilled over, it would defile them. See, wickedness can defile you if you open the door to it. And then, so if you go into a family, there's a bunch of wickedness in the family. Y'all didn't hear what I said. And you didn't do no background search. And there's some wicked folk up in there. And they come out and look at you.
When Christ comes into your life, the Bible says when an unclean spirit goes out of man, he walks in dry places, seeking rest. And when he finds them, he says, then will I take him to be seven other spirits more wicked than myself. See, it starts with the seed. When that seven up spirit come up, then here come a wicked, wicked, perverted spirit. Once that spirit comes, now you got seven more you got to continue with. Just go away from church and go back in the world. Here comes seven more demons. You get worse. You can't get better. How can you get better? Because basically you open yourself up to the worst kinds of spirits. Everybody you meet don't have to know God. There's some people that you got to be very careful or mindful of that they don't know the Lord. They can quote a few scriptures from Genesis Revelation. I said, I'm going to say, God said, God said, Lord, I gave it. Who made He gave it to you to me because He loved the world so you and you get together in the world by God. Though you are lying, you want to call the lifeline to get out of it. <laughs> Because the enemy's job is to steal yeah. and do what? Jesus said, I come that you might have what? Life. And life what? Life. How are you going to have it if you give it away? You cannot give the life that Christ gave you to anybody because everybody is not going there. I'm at a point where I meet people and I love them, but I can't love the deed of that person. Okay, God loves gay people, right? But he don't like to sin. God loves lesbians, but he don't like the sin. See, the sin is what got them in trouble. Busting swabs on each other. That ain't none of God. You better keep your big juicy fruit lips to yourself. It don't make no sense. You can't do that. Now, I'm not trying to offend some of y'all, but some of y'all came. I'm glad some of y'all got free. But everybody didn't get free. Amen? Amen? When I was a young man, the devil tried to put that tendency on me, and I rebuked it. When I was coming up, trying to go, which way do you go? Which way do you go? I said, ah, I got me some weights. and started lifting my weights. <laughs> And I love you for it. I want you to write the books and chapters because you don't know you can help somebody else to be free. Please help somebody. It's hard to see people going through a tragedy in their life where they can't get free from that spirit. And that spirit got them violent. And here we are, we saved in the church. Look at them, just look. Shut up! If you don't judge them, pray for them. Pray to God. Pray to God. Pray to God. Pray, pray, pray. That's my job. I don't care if a man been married to 21 women. I'm praying for him. That woman that came to the well and was talking to Jesus, he said, give me a drink. He said, you don't have nothing to deal with. He said, if you knew who I was, you would give me the drink. Right. He said, okay. He said, where is your husband? She said, I ain't got nothing. He said, you was there well. Because the one you with right now ain't yours. In other words, the one he was with, that, 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 that man was somebody else's. Y'all hear what I said, right? That man belonged to somebody else. The man had been married or was married. Then we go, Father, think about this. And he says, so we are here at Jacob's well. Father's done this well. And he said, you had five husbands. And he delivered her right at that well. You know what she did? She ran, and guess what happened? Let me tell you what happened. She ran, and immediately, this blew me away. It, it touched my heart. She went and brought back a whole town, and every one of them were men. She brought all these men back to Jesus. Come and see a man that told me all about myself. Let me tell you something. If you understand that God 
is not interested in your past. He's interested in your destiny.
stay out there. I'm going to get up on my feet and tell God, thank you. Because if it had not been for you, God, which was on my side, I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But you stopped by to tell death, you got to behave yourself. You can't have it yet. I'm not through yet. I'm not finished yet. I got to work to do. So somebody say, get ready. Because God got a work to do in your life. Somebody shout. My God is the everlasting God. He's able to do anything. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will heal you. Yes, your heart been broken. God will heal your broken heart. God will heal your wounded spirit. God will heal you from everything. Somebody say everything. God will bring you out, but the devil keeps trying to bring you back. Devil, you are liar. In the name of Jesus, shout yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Again, thanks for watching Lifeline.